Hi. The goal of this video is to get you comfortable moving around in Blender 2.5. If you're going to continue with Blender, 2.5 will be your new home. The developers just made 2.5 the official trunk for Blender development. This means that future development will be exclusively in 2.5. Work on older versions will most likely be limited to bug fixes as 2.5 becomes the standard. Scaling and rotating objects are a fundamental Blender skill. The pivot point defines how objects will be rotated and scaled. If you're relatively new to Blender, you can easily get objects moving in ways you might not expect. As we progress, I'll point out differences between Blender 2.5 and the older versions. The pivoting actions really haven't changed in 2.5. However, some cosmetic things like the default color of the active object and the icons for rotation and scaling have changed. You should feel very comfortable pivoting your way in 2.5 almost immediately. We start with the default Blender scene. First, we delete the default cube. Before, you could either use the delete key or press X. In 2.5, only X works. The delete key does nothing, so press X and confirm the delete. We'll add the monkey object by pressing the space key. Something happens, but it's not what you expect. You get a different menu from before, a menu that has nothing to do with adding objects. Press Escape. We'll save the discussion of this other menu for another time. Instead, press Shift-A, which is the keyboard shortcut for adding objects. Shift-A brings up the familiar Object Add menu. We'll select Add Mesh Monkey as before. Let's look at the outliner window in the upper right corner of the screen and scroll down. Guess what? Suzanne isn't there. She's been renamed Mesh. I guess they'll have to rename the Suzanne Award. We'll create three monkey objects to demonstrate rotation. First, duplicate our monkey. It will take a bit of time getting used to the name Mesh with Shift-D. Shift-D works the same as before. We grab a copy move it away from the original and left click to confirm. Then we'll press Shift D to create another copy and drag it to form a triangle of monkeys. Switch to Quad View, a new built-in view, by going to the View menu and selecting Toggle Quad View. The window is divided into four windows, Top, Front, Right, and Camera, that make it, in my opinion, much easier to navigate around your scene than before. Since Toggle Quad View is a toggle, selecting Toggle Quad View again will get you back to the startup scene so that if you don't want to just work in one 3D window, you can. However, we'll work in Quad View. Adjust the monkey's positions so that they look right in Top View and Camera View. We'll work in Top View. Select the first monkey with right click, then hold down the Shift key, right click, and select the second monkey and hold down the shift key, right click, and select the third monkey. Note that the default color for the selected object and the active object, the last one you selected, and the name that displays in the lower left hand corner has changed from pink to orange. I think orange is much easier to see. The active object has a light orange border as opposed to the light pink color in the older Blender versions. The default pivot mode is bounding box center which means that the pivot point is defined by the bounding box. The Move Object Centers Only button is off by default, as before. Press the R key to rotate the monkeys. Note that the rotation icon is a double arrows, and the monkeys rotate around the bounding box center. Pressing Escape cancels the rotation, as before. Just for fun, press the R key twice, R and R. This allows you to rotate in three dimensions. It's a neat feature and not very well known. Press Escape to cancel. Turn the Move Object Centers button on. This makes rotation and scaling affect the object centers only, not the objects themselves. Now press R and rotate. The monkeys do not tilt as they rotate. Press Escape to cancel the rotation and turn off the Move Object Centers Only button. Now press S to scale. With the Move Object Centers Only button inactive, all the monkeys grow or shrink. Press Escape to cancel the scaling. 
Now turn the Move Object Centers Only button on and press the S key. Now the monkeys don't grow or shrink, but they do get nearer or farther away from each other while preserving their relative position. This is useful for repositioning objects in your scene. Press Escape and turn off the Move Object Centers Only button. Now open the Pivot menu and select Active Object as your pivot point. Press R to rotate. Now the monkeys tilt while they rotate around the active object, similar to the bounding box behavior. Press Escape to cancel. Turn on the Move Object Centers Only button and press the R key. Now the monkeys keep facing forward as they rotate around the active object. Press Escape to cancel the rotation and turn off the Move Object Centers Only button. Press the S key to scale. The monkeys grow and shrink. Press Escape to cancel the scaling. Turn on the Move Object Centers Only button and press the S key. Now the monkeys move away from or closer to each other, but do not grow or shrink. Press Escape to cancel and turn off the Move Object Centers Only button. Open up the Pivot menu and select Individual Centers as your pivot point. Press R to rotate. Each monkey rotates around its center point. Press Escape and turn on the Move Object Centers Only button. Now when you press R to rotate, nothing happens. That's because the centers, all three of them, rotate. The monkeys don't do anything. Press Escape to cancel. Turn off the Move Object Centers Only button and press S to scale. Now the monkeys grow and shrink in unison like a dance line. Press Escape to cancel and turn on the Move Object Centers Only button. Again, the monkeys do not do anything because only the centers scale and each of them is only a point to begin with. Press Escape to cancel and turn off the Move Object Centers Only button. Now we'll open up the Pivot menu and select the 3D cursor as your pivot point. The behavior of rotation and scaling is the same as for bounding box and active object, except that the pivot point is around wherever the 3D cursor is situated. So that gives you the flexibility of moving the 3D cursor and pivoting the objects around it. Our final pivot point, medium point, is the center point for all the selected objects. This is similar to bounding box center, except that the median point might be, and usually is, different from the bounding box center, because objects tend to have different sizes. As you see, the behavior is similar, but the pivot point is slightly different. To summarize, pivoting is basically the same as before. However, because of the new quad view, the better choice of colors and icons, and the improved design of the startup screen, it's much easier to see what's going on.